You have to hand it to Cherry. She is tough. From the moment you meet and she's dragging what's left of her beaten, broken android body across the ground in vengeful pursuit of the guy who ran off with her girl, everything about who Cherry is becomes instantly clear. Strong, sassy, principled, and gloriously self-aware. It nicely sets the stage for one of 2023's more unforgettable video game heroes. And while Metroidvania Cookie Cutter does occasionally frustrate as much as it entertains, that intro leaves no doubt for what it's all about. It's about violence. The gorier and the bloodier, the better. Unlike other recent games pressed from the same mold, Cookie Cutter isn't about innovating the Metroidvania template or incorporating ideas inspired by other genres, such as Hollow Knight's Souls-like influences. As old school a Metroidvania as it comes, Cookie Cutter blends a memorable cast with a sprawling, interconnected world and striking hand-drawn graphics. It's one of the more approachable entries to the genre as well, if you like blood, of course. Lots and lots of blood. A lot of Metroidvanias released over the last few years have been grim, gothic, oh-so-serious affairs, so Cookie Cutter's unabashed, over-the-top presentation and celebration of color are refreshing. Accompanied by her friend Regina, a disembodied robotic head that closely resembles the part of the female anatomy that rhymes with her name, yes, really, just look. Cherry lets her fist do the talking as she punches, smacks, and flattens anything stupid enough to get in her way. Cookie Cutter is fully active. It's easy to care about Cherry and her quest, and exciting to see her augment herself and adapt to the challenges of the mega structure that you'll explore. Cookie Cutter's world is rich in detail, and each biome of the map is home to a unique selection of critters, say the Denzel Factory's droids or the Bloody Den's maddeningly electrified eel things. You'll attack them with a combination of light and hard attacks. The former builds up void power, the latter uses it up, and there are countless combos to perfect as you kick and punch your way through the world. One-on-one, -on -one, most enemies aren't too difficult to defeat, but even if you're pretty good at parrying, very easy enemies can often get overwhelming if there are enough of them. How you play will change over time, though, particularly as you unlock new abilities and find components that help you tweak Cherry's skill set to better suit your playstyle, such as focusing on offensive skills or making it quicker to self-heal. But it doesn't matter how bombastic the animations are when Cherry wipes out a boss with a motorbike or beats something to death with an electric guitar. <laughs> Sometimes you'll just never feel quite powerful enough to take on the sheer number of enemies around you, especially the ones that can shoot through walls. Because it takes a while for you to unlock Cherry's full potential, the first half of Cookie Cutter's 20-ish hour runtime has a couple of surprisingly challenging boss fights, as well as some particularly difficult horde-like auto-lock rooms where you have to take on waves of increasingly tougher enemies to continue. Part of the appeal of a Metroidvania is that whenever you accidentally stumble into a boss lair and get your face kicked in, you can make a swift exit, find some upgrades or secrets along other paths, and then come back buffed up and ready for the fight. Fight. But although Cookie Cutter ostensibly offers a non-linear approach, on a couple of occasions, that next thing you need to level up is just past the enemies in that tough room, which means you have to tackle them in order to progress the story, which can be frustratingly limited. And yes, there are secrets for those prepared to seek them out. In true Metroidvania style, there are plenty of hidden materials, weapons, and abilities for Cherry to find if you're the curious sort who always has to punch a wall before you leave just in case it's breakable. Sometimes your curiosity will be rewarded, sometimes it will not, but the glee of discovering a secret off-the-map room never gets old. 
The best part about Cookie Cutter is how it constantly reinvents itself. Just as you start to feel a little tired of bashing things with your fist, you'll unlock a guitar that can smash enemies' heads. As soon as you think you've exhausted every cave and corridor, you'll unlock a new ability that will let you ground stomp or quick dash or grapple, which opens up previously inaccessible areas. You'll learn how to whack not only interactive objects around the map, say these giant spheres which act as locks, but also enemies that send them flying into environmental hazards too. That turns the electrified floors and steam vents that made getting around for Cherry so difficult into an advantage to be used. That all said, it can get a little tricky to see what's going on, especially when the camera occasionally zooms out too far or in too close in certain areas, with no way to change it manually. This is particularly frustrating when you're locked in a room with dozens of enemies and can't quite see where you are, let alone where you're going, causing you to lose sight of Cherry completely in a cloud of fists and blood and dismembered body parts. Thankfully, she moves around quite well. Despite the frenzied action, Cherry is responsive, moving with purpose and fluidity as she fights, and you'll unlock enough save points that death rarely feels overly punishing, apart from a couple cruelly distant checkpoints from boss rooms. Fast traveling is tough, but not agonizingly so, as each section of the map only has one or two Denzel stations with teleporters that let you nope out of an area completely. Energy cells, the collectible slots Cherry uses to equip passive buffs, are at least in plentiful supply, letting you extend your health bar, improve your ass kicking, or add an additional uppercut to a multi-hit combo. The main issue really is Cherry's self-healing ability. Her offensive skills use Void Power, which you build up by landing light attacks, but you can also use this power to self-heal simply by pressing down on the D-pad. Let there be no doubt, it's a very, very good thing it exists, as the whole experience would be much more frustrating without it. However, it just takes so long for Cherry to pull it off, especially in high-octane rooms where you're locked in and the enemies keep on spawning. You are eventually able to upgrade it to be a bit faster, but it makes the early hours just much more challenging. And if you do find Cookie Cutter too tough, there's nothing you can do about it either. Although it's undoubtedly one of the easier Metroidvanias of recent years, it has almost no customizable options behind key rebindings and no ability to tweak the difficulty to better suit your skill level. Be that to make it easier or harder. Despite an occasionally frustrating early game, Cookie Cutter is a thoughtful, creative, and mostly approachable Metroidvania that embodies all the things you'd expect from the genre within its own distinctive style. If this type of game isn't usually your thing, then its fairly standard structure probably won't do much to win you over, especially when its map can sometimes feel a little less open than it first appears. But as a fast, frantic action game to keep you busy, you could do a lot worse than spending a little quality time with Cherry and her gruesome friends. <laughs> For more action, check out our reviews of Asgard's Wrath 2 or Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. And for everything else, stick with IGN. <laughs>